Hey guys, welcome to the 101 and 10, where you get to figure out and meet your favorite artists from around the world, 101 in 10 minutes. I am your host, Ayasha Roberson, and this week we are back with a new artist. We have the beautiful, talented Kenga Andres, and she is with us today, and she's going to talk about her new album, she's going to talk about her new songs, her latest projects going on, and also about her musical influences, how she got into this music industry. So, no further ado, Ms. Kenga Andres, welcome again to the show. Thank you so much for being on the show on 101 and 10. Now, I want to know, and I know the fans would love to know as well, how did you start in the music industry? How did you come up with your music influences? And what led you into this path? Or, or who? Yeah. So I was always, I grew up in a musical household and we were always performing um, in me and my siblings in churches, musical events, weddings, uh, those kinds of things. And uh, when I became an adult at some point, with, you know, in adult life, I realized, gosh, we always stop doing those things, those create, not always, but a lot of us um, get into a career as I did and stop doing those creative things that we used to do. I was still doing gigs here and there, but I wasn't writing my own songs. And I got to a point where I also had stories to tell. Mm -hmm. So um, that would be the shift for me about a few years ago after I had just like a tough kind of traumatic in, uh, incident in life. And then after that, I, I started writing a song every day for a year because oh, that, cool. yeah, like I was like, I'm going to write a song a day. And it was extremely healing for me. And then I, um, from that point, it was just getting the confidence to put those vulnerable thoughts and feelings out there. And I had another artist inspire me to do that, who was also a mother. Um, her name is Miko, and she's an artist, a American artist. And she released an album, In Your Dreams. And she, at that time I met her, and she was just like, you have to never stop doing what makes you tick in life. And for right. me, it was, yeah, sharing those stories. And um, I learned a lot from the first songs that I released um because I realized from that point in time the first song I wrote was all about me and my feelings and not about others so much so now I'm starting to realize um I want to write in a way and communicate music in a way where I feel good and where other people can also be invited in relate and share in that experience so I feel like I'm, that's, that's great I, th I think it's great that you um were able to share your story and be vulnerable to that because a lot of times as artists we are like mm, you know we we want to share but we just a little like mm, we don't want to overshare sometimes yeah. as well and we want people to be able to receive it too and a lot of times a lot of people are going through what we're going through or they know someone that's going through what what we're going through and a lot of times it's so much needed as well like just the the music of healing and as you were healing other people were healing through your music as you're writing down your words because you said it took you what a day for a year you wrote a song which is like absolutely like amazing um mm -hmm. that you were able to just throw your thoughts and feelings and that was your healing that was your therapy and that's where your music come across in that particular album as 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 your healing and um, music can heal and it can change people's lives. So thank you so much for doing that and, and, and sharing that incredible uh, transformation process that you went through. Now, in regards, you're welcome. Now, in regards to your musical influences, now I know that you're in Canada. So can you tell us a little bit about your musical influences and what has evolved your music to where it is today? Yeah, sure. So I'm actually, I'm a Canadian, but I live in Germany. Sorry, sorry. No, don't worry. I'm just <laughs> letting you know, I am, Canadian. but I go back often so okay. for like two months at a time. But yeah, so when it's culturally complex, actually, because okay. I grew up in a Polish household, so there was like a lot of Polish folk music okay. going on too. <laughs> and um, but we had a lot of like ABBA, Bonnie M growing okay. up, a lot of classics. And I played a lot in hospitals and seniors' homes for um different parties and stuff. And so they just loved like the classic songs. Correct. Right. 
Bills and stuff like that. So I was always, I what I, what I always loved about those that kind of music is it's usually very simple. Um, everyone can kind of sing along. Uh, usually feel good vibes, you know. And yeah. that's but um, in terms of personally, who I felt connected to in terms of the music was I loved um, Amy Winehouse. Um, I loved the Cranberries growing up. Oh, yeah. I listened to a lot of them. Spice, okay. um, um, Katie Malua too, like really s soft and sweet. Uh, Jewel, and then I also went through like like uh, Alanis Morissette phase. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I kind of appreciate everything, um, and which has always been hard for me to. And I like to draw upon different influences too. Which is so, a good and, thing. Yeah, because I think that's what makes your music so unique because you're drawing from all this musical influences from your childhood and as an adult as well. And that, was, that has really created your style as your own unique style um, as an artist. And I think that's very challenging for artists to do, um, especially nowadays with so many um, different art, uh, artists, but a lot of times artists um, tend to, instead of pull from it, they tend to, you know, and I've said this before, mimic them. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about your music. Now, you have a song called Parachute, which I like. Um, you have another song. I can't remember the whole title of the song, but I know it starts with the soul. I absolutely love that song. It has like a pop feel, but of reggae um, yeah. type of West Indian feel to it. So it has that vibe. So I love the fact that, you know, you have music where it can sound more poppy. And then you have music where your voice can change a little bit and it can sound more of that Caribbean feel when you um, write your music. Now, how did you come up with the concepts to those two songs and what was your influence behind them? Yeah, uh, so with Parachute, that one, um, it was actually originally an upbeat one on the guitar. <laughs> Oh, so a lot wow. of times, yeah, a lot of times I would sit and strum the guitar when I didn't have words, and then after some strumming, words would come, um, and I was like, I really need to to write a simple song, <laughs> like mm -hmm. not too many words, not to get mm -hmm. you overly complicated, okay. Okay. but after okay. some kind of emotion, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, and 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 that particular song was kind of about. Um, being grateful for the people in our life who are there for us when, mm -hmm. when we fall, um, when we need them. And also about self-care that sometimes we need to kind yeah. of um, get away and remind ourselves of who we are. And we're lucky for the people that are still there when we kind of come back, you know, mm -hmm. um, because mm -hmm. we all need, it's nice when you don't have to explain yourself in order to Correct. do that. So anyway, yeah, with that one, um, when I met my producer, um, he's just really good at hearing a song and seeing the potential of mm -hmm. it right away in terms of production, which is awesome because I just vision it on the guitar, <laughs> you know, and that's it. Great. Um, so he kind of was like, yeah, this strings, um, like a little bit of orchestra, like an orchestra feel behind okay. it would be nice um yeah. and equity and yeah it was and and to keep the acoustic part of it so to keep that guitar right. in there so it's a nice mix i think it is yeah. it very much is and i i just love how you infuse the the musicality of it along with the words as well as is no other purpose perfect song in my book that I would be able to put together myself so I mean it's a job well done on that so, song and then the soul captain you were asking so that's really funny because that one originally sounded like uh so we live in ham I live in Hamburg which is like a Hanseatic uh, mm -hmm. city and there's a port here and it honestly sounded like a song for pirates when I first started singing it like <laughs> Got his song. Um, yeah, I was like stamping on with the feet when I'd sing it live and with the guitar, and mm -hmm. it, it was just goofy a little bit, uh, like for sail with the sailing concept and the mm -hmm. ships. And uh, I, I am gonna be your soul captain. Okay. Like it was just kind of this 
not really a drinking song, but I don't know how to explain it. It just wasn't what it turned out to be. And then we're like, okay, well, this can also have potential to have this beachy vibe, Uh a nice summer song with Mm -hmm. the whole ocean and sea imagery. So yeah, so I do love that as an independent artist, you could do anything you want. Correct. Um, Which is a great thing. You don't have to stay between the lines. You can kind of go outside the lines and really create something that's just different and unique. And that's, I think, where the Soul Captain went. You say it went from this pirate type of song to like this flowy type of island song. Because when I was a student, I was like, hey, hey, hey. And, you know, I just, you know, your voice actually sound more Caribbean as well. So it just had a nice flow to it. And I think that's, that's the beautiful thing about your gift, your voice, that you can just flow into a nice ballad and your voice sounds so differently. And then you can flow into like a little Caribbean type of uh, flipping a little bit and then your voice sounds, it matches that type of rhythm as well. So it's, it's, it's good that your voice can expand from different types of genres of music, which you don't always see. Um, in the industry, because I know that I've spoken to different artists and they say, well, I sung uh, rock and roll, like, ah, yelling and screaming. They said their voice would, like, die. It would just, they wouldn't have a voice. So it's good that you can just actually go from one uh, genre of music to the next, which is a beautiful thing. That's definitely a gift. Now, since the holidays are coming around, um, I wanted to talk a little bit to you about your new single for Christmas. Can you tell us a little bit about that single and what is it about? Yes, sure. So um, basically I moved seven years ago away from Canada where I was born and raised my whole life and my whole family's there, my siblings. And originally we were like, okay, we're going to alternate Christmas one year here in Germany and then the next year in Canada and that didn't work out so well and in the pandemic I wasn't able to go Mm -hmm. for Christmas and so it was five years Mm -hmm. um, of being away from that whole Christmas experience back Mm -hmm. home which Mm -hmm. is really rich in tradition for us Um, yeah so we have so my parents uh, put a lot of effort really into the food and the decoration and all the traditions so um it was really, really hard. And I know there are a lot of people also who could not go home for Christmas as well, right? right. Pandemic. So um, so I wrote a song coming from that perspective and really mm-hmm. tried to stick with it and not get out of the story, oh. um, which was just basically looking back at the memories that were special, um, mm-hmm. but fairly general, so people can maybe still relate to them. And um and then you know and then at the end of the song like it's not really clear whether you go back for Christmas or whether it's just you're living in the memories of your mind but it's kind of just a reminder that um we have those memories to access yes and appreciate those memories as well so make sure you guys get her new single can't do Christmas without you this holiday season it's a great song to play whether you're able to get back to your family or not this holiday season, it's just a really good, feel good Christmas song that holds memories of the people that you love and cherish in your life. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about how can people get in contact with you? How can they book you for upcoming events, gigs, shows, and also your social media as well? That's so sweet. (laughs) Um, That's so nice that you actually say that, you know, at the end. Um, That's super supportive. Um, So I'm mostly, I decided just to stick to, or to be dedicated to one social media platform because it's overwhelming. So um, I'm active on Instagram and then I answer messages there and it's just my name, Kinga Angelis, K-I-N-G-A-A-N-G-E-L-Y-S. Basically every platform, YouTube, Facebook, um, what else is there? Twitter, not really active as much on them, but I'm there. And then on my website, kingaandalus.com, you can um, see everything there is to know about my music. I have a description of every song. There's my uh, EPK there with all the details for booking or pictures or whatever you need. And I love to do house concerts. I find them really intimate and especially in these times. So I do a lot of house concerts either on the balcony 
um, for all types of ages and events. Um, yeah, and I take requests and everything and also online streams I've done too, so. Well, it was a blessing and such an amazing interview with you, Kanga Angelus. And I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to go on with your new projects coming in in 2022. But thank you so much for being on the show. And thank you guys so much for watching the 101 in 10, where we get to feature a new artist from around the world, 101 in 10 minutes. Again, my name is Ayasha Roberson. I am your host. Make sure you guys stay tuned to the next 101 in 10. We look forward to seeing you guys soon. Take care. Bye.